high voltage transmission towers are often surrounded by restricted areas. Then there is just some of them just right there, openly accessible to everyone. In this video, we answer what actually happens when you touch a transmission tower. Well, the short answer is that you'll be fine, like most of the time. Why is that? First, we identify what is energized and what is not. The lines, the conductors, they are energized. They carry electricity from one place to another. The tower, they are not supposed to be energized. And also this line on top, it's also not supposed to be energized as well. We'll get back to this later. How is this possible? This is metal, that is metal. And if metal thingies are touching each other, electricity should be flowing. Well, it's because of these things right here. They are called insulators. Their job is to insulate. They separate the current carrying conductors from the tower that carries the conductors. Wait, that was somewhat confusing. Let me rephrase that. These are conductors that carry current. So, current carrying conductors. Then, these are towers that carry the conductors. Not the electricity. Just the conductors that carry the electricity. Towers don't carry the electricity. Just like how I'm not supposed to carry this worthless trash during university assignment. Sorry about that, let's move on. For electricity juices to flow, you need two things. First of all, you need potential difference between two points, which is a difference in potential between the two points. And second, you also need low resistance. In other words, a path. Potential difference gives you a start point and an end point. Low resistance gives you a path or a road. Both conditions must be met for electricity to flow. If you have a path, but it leads nowhere, then the juices ain't gonna flow. Same if you flip it around, like if you have a start point and an end point, meaning the potential difference is there, but there is no path, everywhere is just high resistance, then you probably ain't leaving your house tonight, you're stuck at home, you're staying in this house. So if you grab electricity, you have provided a road, but you are floating, meaning that there's no end point. You now have the same potential as a conductor, but you ain't conducting through you because you ain't touching any ground or another potential. Electricity only flows when the circuit is complete. It ain't gonna be making a U-turn when the road ahead is closed. It has ways. Then you turn right. You know, I'm not way. It knows where to go first, then only you make a move. Look at these birds sitting on the line and not getting shocked because they are not connected to the ground. There isn't a path for the electricity to get to ground if it flows through the bird. Correction. There isn't a shorter path for electricity to get to ground if it flows through the birds. The road is closed. There is no road. It's a different story when there's a kite involved. Then it connects to ground. I even heard a story of how some banana leaves nearly caused a collapse of the entire country. But that's a story for another day. Remember when I said that these lines on top are not energized and don't carry current earlier in the video? These are called earth wires or shield wires. You see that it doesn't have any insulators attached to these lines? What does it mean? That means that it is connected directly to the tower. So if you label the voltages, the lines would be energized and have some amount of potential. But the line on top and the tower share the same potential and same voltage because metal thingies are touching metal thingies. That is because the line on top is not transmitting any rated electricity. The shoot wire, it will take the lightning hit, divert it to the tower and straight to the ground. The only electricity that is designed to transmit are the lightning shocks that it receives when shooting the other current carrying conductors. That's why the shooting line on top is designed differently from the other conductors beneath it. Lesser bundles, no insulators, even thinner. But, 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 but it carries lightning current, which is much larger magnitude compared to the rated current that the other conductors are carrying. Well, true, but carrying lightning current is only for milliseconds, while the other conductors beneath it carry the system current for the entire day. Temperature takes time to build up. The shoot wire, its purpose is to take the lightning heat and channel it to the tower and straight to the ground. For this design to function as per intended design, 
there are a few things that need to behave. First of all, the tower footing resistance. Remember when I said the shoe lines on top share the same voltage as the tower which is ground? That is true if the tower footing resistance is able to discharge all the electricity to the ground via this TFR. Electricity don't flow through concrete gut. Each tower needs a TFR or else the voltage should be floating and the first person that touches the tower becomes the TFR and electricity discharges to the ground via that person. And number two, you need insulators. Insulators is not only separating the rated current at the conductors from the tower and the earth wire, it also separates the lightning current from jumping onto the current carrying conductors. One opens the door to the ground to discharge, while the other makes sure the door to the current carrying conductors remains shut. These two need to function together on each tower. If any tower has a failure of this happening, a backflash may occur. A backflash is when lightning current is not discharged fast enough to the ground. So, there are some congestions happening in the tower. It may look for another path to go. Then, the insulator is not able to keep the congestion lightning current from joining the system. A backflash occurs. The protection relay will kick in and trip the circuit. How fast can a line be restored depends on if the auto reclose is successful or not. Insulators were traditionally made from porcelain, but these days it is usually made from glass, due to several reasons. It is easier to spot cracks in glass. Glass has high resistivity, high tensile strength, and low thermal expansion. Glass do not heat up much in sunlight. They are transparent and the sun ray passes through them and therefore doesn't degrade much. Less maintenance work overall. Insulators are very modular. This is a single plate of insulator. They would hook it and elongate it depending on how much rated voltage it is supposed to suppress. Another thing that glass insulators can do is glass toughening. The toughening process is when you slowly heat up the glass insulators and then quickly cool down the surface. This generates a permanent compressive pre-stress on the surface of the glass while the inside of the glass is expansive stress. This makes the glass tighter. By doing glass toughening exercise, there are several random benefits like 4 to 6 times tougher mechanical strength, higher resistance to thermal shock and mechanical impacts, immunity to effects of aging, it can be 70 years later and the characteristics are still maintained. But in my opinion, the most important benefits of toughened glass is that it shatters. Wait, 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 let me explain, let me explain. Toughened glass shattering? What? Yeah, let me explain. If there is a crack, the insulator doesn't insulate anymore and you would have to replace it. But identifying the crack part, I mean the crack part, is extremely tough. But thanks to toughening, the behavior of the dielectric shell becomes binary. Either one, the glass is still intact and that's no possible internal cracks or no punctures. Or two, the glass shatters. The glass is no longer visible on the outside of the metal cap. So if the glass is still in good condition, then it's, it's in good condition. But if there's any crack in the glass, it shatters immediately due to the tensile strength acting against each other. So it's much easier for your maintenance team to identify where the weak spots are and where to work on. Moving on, tower footing resistance. Stabbing the leg of the tower into the ground doesn't mean that the tower is grounded. Most of the cases, the leg of the tower is resting on top of some cement pilings. To ground a tower structure properly, the leg of the tower is connected to the tower footing resistance. You can use copper tape or band-aids to connect the leg of the tower to the Irving system below it. For maintenance, you will dispatch a team to the tower and measure the resistance of the TFR. And if the resistance reading is high, you need to fix the system. This you can either do a routine maintenance or you can identify certain lines that have very, very often backflash occurring and you send some team to figure out if there's any Irving resistance they need to take care of. Okay, okay, quick question. When you're measuring the impedance or resistance of TFR, do you use a DC signal or an AC signal? Ah. Well, the answer is, you look at what the TFR is for. It is for lightning. And lightning doesn't function perfectly at 
50 hertz AC signal, 60 hertz if you're American. So we use DC signal? Well, not exactly either. Lightning is a pulse signal. Ah, you keep that in mind. That's what you write on your exam paper. Pulse signal. You're watching the Funzi channel. Do, 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 do.